Hello everybody, this is Michelle Fox and welcome to The Simple Quilter. I'm really excited today because I'm introducing a new series called How to Quilt with Panels and today's episode will focus on an introduction to panels. Now fabric designers have been creating panels for years but you see them more and more and with the digital printing they are just so attractive. Uh, and so fun to work with and so fun to purchase. So um, fabric designers do frequently um, create a panel and then they have complementary fabrics for that panel, but the panel is the main focus of the line. Now that doesn't mean that you have to use their complementary fabrics. You can use fabrics from your stash and you can certainly use their complementary fabrics and never use their panel. So, uh, that's really just up to you. So I, as I've been learning more and more about panels, I wondered what the difference between cheater's cloth was and fabric panels. And I don't know that I just saw this specifically in writing, but this is what I gathered from what I have read. Uh, a cheater's cloth, I remember my mother using cheater's cloth, and a, Cheater's cloth was like just bolts, was just fabric on the bolts like what we see now. That fabric was designed so that people didn't have to do the piecework or the applique. They could simply buy the cloth, quilt it, and it would look like a quilt. And that was designed to be an entire quilt. Now, fabric panels are, to me, are... Um, specific artwork that you use to make a quilt and it will have corresponding motifs that you can use uh, on that panel and that's that's how I see the difference in those. Now originally uh, panels were typically 24 or 36 inches but now with the digital printing there are so many different sizes. Um, there are huge ones that can be used as an entire quilt. So uh, you're, you're just going to have to see what size you'd like. Now you might think, well, how do I select a panel? Now for me, I purchase whatever panel I like and I've purchased a lot of panels, but if you're going to make a bed size quilt, then you're going to need to purchase more than, you know, just one panel because panels can be used to make bed quilts, lap quilts, baby quilts. They can be used to make um, table runners, wall hangings, placemats, mug rugs, aprons, pillows, all kinds of things. So uh, you do, you may need to know a little bit what you want to do with it or you know, I just purchase them. If I like it, I purchase it. If I think it's going to make a cute quilt or a wall hanging or a big throw, whatever, I just purchase those and then I will decide later what to do with them. Now, when you're using panels, the only limiting factor in using a panel to make a quilt is basically your imagination because there are truly no set rules for making panels. You can you can just do all kinds of things with panels. Now some panels were designed to be used whole and other panels are designed to uh, you, in parts so that you can cut those parts up and create your own setting. So in this series we're going to be starting with the basics and again this today is just the intro to panels and then we're going to build and uh, build on uh, the basics and make more complicated settings and layouts for uh, quilt panels. What I want to do next is show you projects that I've made throughout my years of quilting and some of the quilts that I've made and then I want to show you some of the panels that were in my stash and some that I've purchased recently and then I have a couple of resources that I'll share with you at the end that you may decide you want to use to help you as you're um, learning to use panels uh, in your quilt making. The two panels behind me are just um, panels that were just quilted. There's no borders added to them. Uh, my mother used to love to do hand stitching and she loved to use the 
panels or cheater's cloth. And uh, so I would put these small projects together and she just, she really loved hand quilting them. And uh, here are the first two. Now this looks like it's been pieced, but it's not. And these, these are really older panels and they're both a Christmas theme. Now these next two, I've added borders to these panels, just simple borders. And again, these were ones that my mother hand quilted, one's a Christmas theme and one is a 4th of July theme. So in this first one, I just added just a real thin border there, a thin border there, and then one outer border. So I, so I added a total of three borders. And they're not really pieced, they're, they're, just, they're just overlapping borders. And then in this one, I added a small accent border, and then I did a piece border. Okay, now this is a project um, that I made uh, clear back in 1999, but it's really pretty neat because the when you use piece blocks like these, it's timeless, and Americana always appears timeless to me. Um, I guess that's just my opinion, but here's an example. I have the panel still, and I found it when I was cleaning out uh, my quilt room, so th that was kind of fun, and I, I hope to use these to make another similar uh, little runner. This goes on our fireplace, and I just really love it. And again, it's just two piece blocks, and um, I think it would be fun to use my flying geese ruler to make some stars and try uh, to make some more of these because they're just so neat. And I, again, I just love the panels. Okay, now this uh, is an example of just a panel that had borders added and then these were just little smaller panels within the bigger panel that I cut out to use with the border. Now many fabric designers uh, will have free patterns when they release a panel and this was a free pattern and I actually made two of these quilts. I made one for my son who is a full-time firefighter and one for my husband who is a volunteer firefighter. So they each have one of these. Okay, so this this is again one that I made for my granddaughter and I, this is really neat because the panel is offset. Now I had a pattern that I used to make this and um, I can't find the pattern. I must have given it to somebody but I wish I hadn't given it to somebody else because I could have used this for any type, for any panel um, that had similar dimensions. So uh, if you find a pattern and it goes with a specific line, just remember that you can use that pattern again with other panels. So, okay, so here's this one. And I, I just really love how this is just offset. So here's the main panel and then the piecing around it. Okay, now uh, this is another one of my favorites. Well, I guess I have a lot of favorites because I really do like panel quilts. Now this is just a good example of using panels that have smaller pieces of artwork throughout the panel. This is my retreat quilt and if I ever get to go back on another retreat, this is what I'll be taking. But as you can see, there's just small panels. And because I didn't have enough panels, I went ahead and used just the pieces that some of the uh, complementary fabrics.
Okay, so these two panels are from my stash, and I just wanted to show you or give you an example of ones that you can, panels where you can cut apart the individual pieces. Now this is 24 inches, but it's positioned horizontally. This one's 24 inches, but it's positioned vertically. And you could just add borders to both of these if you wanted, but um, you could also cut them apart. You could even use this little piece. And again, these were just ones that I had in my stash. Now this is a nice example of a quilt panel that's really uh, used, is really designed to be used as a whole piece within additional borders and things put on the outside. But it's not really designed to be cut up into small pieces unless you're doing like the window effect. Okay, now here is a recent panel I purchased, and this was really just within the past couple of months, and I just love this. This is a um, vintage-looking fishing panel, and my husband and son are both avid fly fishermen, so uh, I showed this to my husband. He's like, oh, you got to get that, so I actually got two of these, but I just love the vintage look, and I got this one off Etsy. And I'm not going to cut it up. You could probably cut it up, but I'm not going to cut up this panel. This is a brand new fabric line put out by Kim Green. She's the artist, and I absolutely love her artwork. I think it PB and Textiles is the fabric company that puts this out. But Kim Green, this is her artwork, and her artwork is just exquisite. But this is going to be a quilt for my granddaughter, and my granddaughter loves bright colors and she loves farm animals so I'm gonna make this into a quilt for her but I just absolutely love this panel now this is a newer panel put out by Sweetwater and this is a canvas panel now I'm gonna have to do some inf more information gathering on how to use these because I make quilts that are going to be washed and used a lot. And so I want to be sure that if I pair this with regular 100% cotton fabric that I don't have to worry about shrinkages or differences in the fabrics. But the, again, this is put out by Sweetwater. Now these are the last two panels I want to show you. These are put out by Moda uh, and the designer is Zen Chic. And uh, these are linen panels. So again, I have to do some more information gathering about how to use these since they're going to be quilts that will be being washed. So the next thing are two books. One is called Learn to Quilt with Panels. And I bought this just recently at one of our local quilt shops. And this is just a great resource especially if you're a beginner quilter. I just really, really like this one. Um, I, think it, I think this is a great one for beginners. Uh, the other one is called Panel Play, and this one is put out by Barbara Becker. These are both available on Amazon, and the links will be below. Now, this is good for beginners, too, but it also has quilts that have a little bit more difficult design, but um, both of these, both of these are great resources, and both of them have lots of ideas for uh, quilt layouts or settings for panels. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you haven't. Always share with a friend. And uh, if you'd like to leave a comment below, please leave a comment. I love to get the comments, and I try to respond to everyone. If you're new to my channel, I post videos every Wednesday. And until next time, have fun quilting.